You're headed to the all-important 1010. Uh, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, I see that uh, you and uh, Herbert and everybody's just been pumping out, you know, one video after another. And it's brilliant to watch all of you guys uh, do this analysis and breakdown. And hopefully, uh, I'll get an opportunity post 1010. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I think Herbert is trying to organize some sort of live stream um, right. because it turns out more and more of us are going to be inside. I was like, yeah. for some reason, I was like one of the first. He's going to be outside. He's going to be playing no, the no, role he's, of the he's inside. No, he's in, he's inside now. He he got it through oh, the really? referral lottery. Yes. Oh, cool. And, and I That's think good. John Gibbs also, he got his invite. So Wonderful. Doc, Dr. Know-it-all will be there. And unfortunately, uh, you know, Brian White um, didn't get an invite. It's like, oh. really, he, he should get one. But I think he's going to be helping to organize a live stream remotely along with Bradford and CERN. Um, so th they'll probably be doing the, you know, kind of the commentary and then, uh, just bringing us in as we are on there. And so, uh, that's nice. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so are, you, uh, are you allowed to live stream out of the venue? Uh, that's what we'll find out. And, we'll find out. um, okay. I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I've asked, but I haven't seen anything about what the security requirements are, whether backpacks mm -hmm. are allowed or not. It might be that you can bring in a phone, but maybe nothing more than that because, I don't know if people want to bring complex well, considering equipment. the the profile of the people that they've been inviting one would imagine that they'd want you to kind of yes you know, yes i i think so but but there's yeah. going to be probably a limit to how much they want people to, to have there because they have to search backpacks no matter what so they might just say no right. backpacks just empty your pockets okay one or two cell phones everything's fine you, you can well it's going to be interesting it's going to be really fascinating and uh, i wish you the best and uh, fingers crossed uh, it's going mm -hmm. to really be the start of a new book uh, as Elon said, we'll have to wait yeah, and see. So it's, it's, yeah, so do you have any know, uh, it, any guesses? No guesses. You know, the Wii robot, everyone thought hinted to, to more than just the robotaxi. Uh, are they going to unveil, are they going to show Optimus or not there? I mean, that'd be the first time that Optimus has really been seen in public, um, you know, walking or doing anything else. Everything else has just been videos that we've got. So, that way you would have other people that can authenticate that. Yep. It's real <laughs> going around. <laughs> and then whether they'd be showing a roadmap of other potential, um, I think the embodiments that, that a shock referred to is like robot animals. So are, are they also walking on a quadruped? Who knows? Are they working on like, um, some sort of sophisticated mobile robot that you use in factories that could be pretty useful because, you know, just think about they got all the experience that you need. It's like, what's a mobile robot? Well, it's got wheels, it's got a battery pack, it's got electric motors in there, and it autonomously moves around in a structured environment. Like, I think they can do that, you know? <laughs> so yeah, sure. It's just putting the pieces together, and it could be yeah. very useful for them because the, the biggest problem with a lot of mobile robots is not so much the, the robots themselves, but is the, the fleet software to figure out how to get them to where they need to be. So it, it's just like a, a taxi dispatcher, you know, it's like the, the strength of your taxi network is not the number of taxis you have, but how good your dispatchers are of, of getting to the right location, telling where to go. So that's, that's a lot of the management of trying to move those things around. So Tesla is strong software. They might be, be doing that, but that's going to be like, oh, oh, home the most people. Like, I don't care about a mobile robot. <laughs> well, let's just say, ah, we're going to scale this mobile robot down and we're going to put a vacuum cleaner on it which means it's finally going to be better than the Roomba that doesn't do anything. So, so who knows, yeah. you know, maybe they figure out a consumer version of something like that as like one of those kind of robotic devices. That's a possibility. Yeah. But, but, but one thing's for sure it, it has to, I mean, it, it has to capture the imagination of. Yes. Yes. Wall and the Street thing investors. is, is remember is that this because, is supposed because the Tesla really community about, is pretty much sold on this whole, the whole idea, right? Yeah, on the whole idea, but you got to remember this is about the robot taxi, and are you going to kind of steal the lightning from the robot? And the only reason you do something like that is because you're afraid the robot taxi is going to disappoint. So you you do that whole trick that the magicians do is like, look at me over here, so you don't know what's going on over here. You think? No, I don't think so. But I okay. mean, that, that, that's like one of the reasons you do it is because you know everyone's going to be kind of like not so happy about the other thing. But version, if, yes. if, if, if it's really good, you, you don't shine the spotlight somewhere else. You say, look, this is what we're talking about. And um, this this is the big event. So that's why I'm a bit confused on, on why they want to do it. And Elon has talked about it, that everything should have their own, you know, special presentation um, that, you know, everyone was asking what the car is going to be like. So maybe it's going to be that they show the $25,000 car along with it because it's, it's just a derivation of the cyber cab. So there's two things we have to look for. One is like, What's that thing going to look like? And 
you when you think about the whole problem, it's very different. Cars are designed to be driven, okay, and owned. And because of that, the interiors are designed around that. What's needed as far as the driver being able to see, the sight lines are good and everything else. Make sure the steering wheel is there, everything else, protection in the front. And that, oh, um, you know, they're, they're always taking the same car here and there. So we need to have storage. So we have put a center console in there. We put a glove compartment. We put all these other things in there because of this concept of ownership. But if, if you don't own the, the taxi cab or, or the vehicle, you don't need that stuff. So you will have some things that make it convenient for you to put like a coffee cup down or throw your laptop down, but you don't necessarily need to have a glove box or, or anything else. So, you know, that's going to look different. And when you take the whole thing, it's what's that front console going to be like? The other thing yeah. about cars is that um, they're notoriously difficult to get in and out of. I mean, I, I have yet to really find a car where I think it's extremely easy to, to get into. It's, it's rare, especially if they're down low. That It's like really hard for someone of my height that I got to get down there. And we've seen you know, Ferrari drivers that literally have to crawl out because of the way they're down so low. And so yeah. you know, the idea is that since it's not designed to be driven and it's not supposed to be worn like a glove, then you, you start to think about, well, what's the easiest way to allow anyone, especially people that, that have mobility issues yeah. that, you know, how do you make it easier for them to be able to get in out? So how do you redesign the seats? How do you design, redesign the door opening to make it easy? Because a lot of the problem is the door, like bang, you know, your head's getting in there. You got to kind of right. crunch down and go around like that. And if you've got any sort of injury, which I've had with my lower back um, the, the past month, man, you know, every time I get in the car, it reminds me of that injury because oh, yeah. of how I have to like slink around it. Now, so these are the things that I would be looking for. And then, you know, how do you take care of luggage? That's going to be, uh, make it easy yes. for someone going to the airport. So I think it's a two seater. That, that's my feeling. And the whole idea is that if you look at it from that concept, it's going to be very different. So the big part of it is going to be the hardware reveal. We want to see what that hardware looks like. Yeah. The only other thing is I'm not sure how much we're going to be able to figure about the state of the cyber cab software at that point, because yeah. it's, it's, it's on a very close course. It's, it's been, heavily driven. And I'm assuming that it's just going to be flawless. It's, it's not going to be a problem, but that doesn't tell us it's going to work well outside of it. Uh, it so th that's going to be the hard thing to be able to judge. And yeah. all of it we can do is we can judge our own experience with FSD and where it is, but we know where FSD is. It's like, it's, you know, 99.9 .9 right now, but there's still a lot more nines we got to chase. Yeah. The module, the nines isn't over yet. Yeah. And, and, and it's really, so we won't be able to tell how many more nines we've added in there, or how long it's going to be, yeah. but we'll get a glimpse. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people are, are, are kind of expecting a launch. I don't think there's going to be a launch because you need no, the payments no. ecosystem as well. They, yeah, yeah. They don't what have there will be is, what there will be is that they've already shown the app. So I have a feeling everyone that's going to be there is uh, some people have been getting, I think, because uh, remember, every time they update the software, they update it for iOS first. So my prediction is, is that they will have something for attendees there that have an iPhone. <laughs> And maybe it has to be an iPhone 16. I don't know, but it, it's going to have to be iOS. Us Android uh, users are like, we're out of luck, which means I'm hanging out with James Dalma because I know he has an Apple. So that's how we were probably going to be able to test it there. So they will do something to activate it. So everyone that's already updated their, their, their profile, they'll say it goes live in like two seconds or something like that. And bam. And then we can go and then we can just keep on taking the cab from here to here, you know, walk a block over there, get the next one. The other question is like, how many are there going to be? You know, have they only made one or two prototypes? Because they are limiting the size of the crowd, but the crowd seems to be getting bigger and bigger because it's surprising how many people I know are going to be there. So I know there's there's going to at least be several hundred there. And how do you service a hundred people that are just going to be eager to get in this thing and drive around? Is it going to be like the Cybertruck event where there's like one Cybertruck and everyone got to do a quick ride in it to get their impression that's it and you're standing in line? So it'll be kind of disappointing. You're, you're mute. You're muted. You, yep. Oops. All right. Yeah. I, I I think there's going to be a kind of a limited uh, box in the ecosystem where they'll allow you to download the app, perhaps yep. hire a, a cab. There's got to be multiple cabs. You need to be able to kind of at least like I would say four or five to do circuits within the closed area. Yeah, at least that's one thing. Is like a minimum of five. It'd be nice to have a little bit more. Um, yeah. And the um, and the question is, is it needs to be busy because if if you're going through this the cityscape and there's only a couple of these driving around, that's not going to be impressive. So yeah. you need traffic. 
And either yeah. you need to have a lot of cyber cabs or you need to have a lot of robo taxis, which means they may be confident enough that um, it's not just a cyber cab. So you'll go in and hail something. You'll be disappointed because the cyber cab shows up. So here's, so or, here's or, or, or model three, a model three shows up instead of the cyber cab. Like, oh, I want to use Exactly. It. So, so here's a thought. So, so Tesla has a lot of these, these uh, yeah. other, other models that they have that they yes. leased out and then bought back, right? They, I mean, you could, you, they could very well just demonstrate human driven model trees. Either, are, either human driven or, 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 or you, we might see how it will work that where that maybe they figure out how to disable uh, the steering or something like that. So you get in as a passenger. Yeah. So it could be that it's more than the cyber cab because it's all, it's robo taxi. Robo taxi is a big umbrella for like all the different formats. Yeah, exactly. Just like you know, Uber. form factors, but the cyber cab is one particular one. So everyone's going to go around and you get a ride from here to there and it's going to be busy. I mean, that's the whole idea is that, in order for us to really see how it's going to work, we want to see a world where it's like it's like nothing but robo taxis running around, and there's a lot of them. And, and Tesla can flood the zone with a lot of Teslas. It's just that we don't know whether they can flood the zone with a lot of cyber cabs. And so that's what what I'm kind of expecting. I'm betting there's going to be human drive hu humans driving cars as well because on, in the in the real they world, may they, they, they may go. they may do that just to throw in the human factor. But it would yeah. be interesting to see how well the cyber cabs work in in an autonomous only environment that that's been a, been an experiment i would love to, to run you know like a closed course or like on a highway where you have a hundred teslas just driving down the, the highway no other humans no other stupid things how do they interact with each other you know how do they pass and everything like that and figure yeah. it out so if it, you know do they behave better it would be interesting to get some metrics on what that's like yeah. because right now we know it works but it, it's 99 percent of the drivers out there are all human drivers uh but when you have all of them, it'll be interesting to see what kind of emergent technology that might be. And of course, eventually when you go that, then there's going to be this kind of convoying and everything, you know, flocking behavior and everything else that they're going to do that, you know, the people who are in a hurry um, will kind of flock one way. And the people who want to be chill, they'll just all be one kind of slug moving on down the highway. So, so uh, looking out um, over the horizon, they, um, I don't expect, this is my, my assessment, my best guess, is I, I don't see how they can roll out a, a fully autonomous robo taxi service within the next 12 months because you need an entire ecosystem to support it. Yeah. You need a way to, to clean and service the cars. You need a way to charge any charging infrastructure, which if they're using wireless charging, then you need to build all those points. You need to map out the most traveled routes in cities. Um, and if they do maybe intercity or into town, or for towns that are close to each other, you need to a have the the payments ecosystem going. There's a lot of missing pieces right, that need to fall right. into place, and, and I don't see. And of course, you need the production as well. You need the production. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, although and, and, there, I mean, you could theoretically um, just launch the robot taxi service with your Model Threes and and Ys and Xs. Yeah, yeah, and then the the, the owner, it's up to the owner to to do the cleaning. You, you could do that. The, the other possibility yeah. is like, where do they decide to roll it out um, at first? You do a place like San Francisco or LA, you know, I, I saw in LA that the Waymos are running around there. Um, it was rather interesting. I know in San Francisco and other places, when yeah. people see the Waymos, because they will intentionally stand in front of them just to like slow them down and everything. So it, it might be you actually try to find a smaller community that will be kind of open yeah. to the idea of this mobility that yeah. you don't have the, these problems and then scale it up from there. So. Right. Uh, you know, Chandler, um, Arizona is, is is one area where they've done that. I don't know that necessarily is the place they want to go. It's really nice because it's a grid pattern. Uh, and so it's very easy for it to go. But yeah. it's not so clear that, you know, it's like, do you want to do where everyone else is at? So it could be like a small metro area yeah. or a rural area. And then it, like, and then you build up the infrastructure and you see how that's working. And then once you get that, you say, ah, okay, this is, we fine-tuned it. Now let's just start cookie cutter and put it around. Yeah, because the last thing you want to do is get bad publicity. And Tesla is like mm -hmm. a magnet for, you know, bad publicity yeah. from yeah. the mainstream media. Um, often unfair because you've had way more getting into trouble, way more cars getting into trouble all the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. And my, as, as, a, as a major Uber user, oh, by the way, I, I entered the, the lucky draw, but I, I wasn't lucky. <laughs> <laughs> about oh, okay. about here in Qatar, so <laughs> I was I said, hey, who goes as a shareholder? You know, you just might <laughs> turn lucky. Just try, yeah. 
Yeah, but as a, as a as an Uber as a heavy Uber user, you know, one of my major problems is cleanliness within the cars. And unfortunately, with Uber, even the highest tiers, you know, the cars aren't that great anymore. Mm. Um, and so you have surge pricing, you have you know the level hike. So I think RoboTaxi, if they can crack it, is a brilliant solution. But there are real world problems that will continue to and will plague um, and affect the robo taxi network as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And might I say that the expectations or standards will be a lot higher, just because it's Tesla. Yeah, and and uh, and the other thing, like you say, the serviceability is like uh, is not not just designed for manufacture, but like you know, designed for repair and designed for serviceability. And anyone that cleans their cars know how difficult it is. There's always these nooks and crannies that things get stuck in and knuckle busting things when you try to clean things out. And Tesla's a little bit better in that because the dashboards are not so busy. It's very easy to clean that, but you still have the under seats yeah. and stuff like that. And the other thing I noticed is like with bicycles is like the hardest thing of, of like getting your bicycles next to each other is the bicycles are not designed to be lifted up and put in something. Like all these pokey things that come out, they get stuck in spokes and everything else. And, and, and you know, the, the, the pedals that are down there are just always inconveniently somewhere that's going to skin your, your, your shin trying to move it around. And I was just like, man, this can someone design a bicycle that's not only good to be ridden, but you know, very easily to kind of pack up without having all these things getting stuck everywhere. Um, and you know, that's the approach they want to make in the car is, is to, to make it clean. Because a, a lot of Ubers, the reason why they're not clean is it's probably just difficult to get in and get all that stuff, you know, un, under the seat. So if if you're thinking about that, maybe the design so that it's such a clean design, it's just like really easy to wipe it yeah, down and, and it's ready to go. Yeah, I was curious. Do you think there's any any Anything new in in automotive design that they can innovate with to kind of solve this problem? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of it is just deciding you know what your floor mats are going to look like. You know, build all those things in. You know, everyone sort of after the fact uh, weatherproofs their stuff. You know, they they put down these big floor mats because we live up in Michigan. We get all the salt and stuff like that. It's like just make it part of the design. Just build that all that stuff in right away. That if you want to just hose it down, you can hose it down. <laughs> you know, whatever, and, and store all your electronics. Now, you still want to have comfortable seats. You still want them to be able to, to move and recline. You probably want to, you know, have them heated and things like that. Um, but, you know, you want to make sure you do that in such a way. But again, taking like that center console out and everything like that gets away, get, gets around some of those issues of like, oh, one more thing that's in the way that makes it difficult right. to clean. You right. know, maybe the seats are very easily uh, to, to pop up or down to be able to get any debris underneath it so that it doesn't collect in there. Yeah. The restraint system, I imagine they're still going to Love have like a aircraft point seats, system. You know. But I, I wonder if they're going to start innovating or thinking of like, what's another way to, to do the restraints? That's also very nice because a lot of times when you put your seat belts on, I mean, cleaning around them is also a hassle. You know, they also collect all kinds of, so there may be like a fully integrated way that they start thinking of doing all the stuff that will say, well, that's, that's really clever. And that's like yeah. one approach I would take is I would look at every single thing that's a hassle, every pokey little thing that sticks out. It's easily broken mm -hmm. up. It collects dirt. Um, how, how do you mitigate those things to, to make it easier to maintain? And then, you know, like you say, then keep the environment in there nice and enjoyable for all the riders. Yeah. And also learning from Hurricane Helene. And there have been cases where um, a few cars have kind of been damaged. Um, you yourself have experienced a loss. Um, mm -hmm. There should be some way to kind of get the fleet remotely autonomously to higher ground and out of the way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. The last thing you want is to lose your fleet. I mean, I bet if you had a way to remotely get your Tesla to move to higher ground and others did, you'd obviously choose it. You'd choose you would choose to, it. Ab absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because because that's that's the, the, the biggest concern is that if you go away on a business trip, um, you know, do you take the Uber to the airport or do you take the car there and, and pay, you know, three hundred dollars in parking or something like that? So uh, knowing that you, you, know, you can send it to high ground uh, when necessary, would, I think would also be a big benefit. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many little real world, you know, kind of use cases where you have to kind of take into account mm -hmm. when you take the human out of the picture. It, yep. People don't realize how complicated these logistics get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, this, this, this will be everything into account. Yeah, this, this will be the you know, most incredible uh, you know, automatic smart summon <laughs> to be able to, yeah, some, some of it, you know, for 50 miles away or something like that when necessary. 
Well, Elon has said that eventually you should be able to just kind of summon it across the country, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, it's been great. It's great talking to you. I, I know we yeah. were we were due to talk about Starlink, um, but we've ended up uh, talking about 1010 as well. So thank you for taking the time. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, welcome. Always you're great welcome. to see you. Always mm -hmm. great to talk to you and get your insight. Um, stay safe. I hope yeah. you get out of there um, safe and sound. Um, yeah, fingers audience. fingers and, crossed. Uh, uh, we, we we don't have the heavy bands of rain yet, so yeah. <laughs> I think we could. Yeah, we can drive. The last I thing I want to do is like lose lose the car trying to drive out because the water's too deep. I know, I know, that's scary. Well, I I hope uh, you get out safe and uh, looking forward to maybe uh, seeing a live stream from you at mm -hmm. at the venue uh, yeah. on ten ten. Yeah, same here. Same here. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Take care. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome.